Once my heart was full of sin, once I had no peace within, till I heard how Jesus died upon the tree. Then I fell down at his feet, and there came a peace so sweet. Now the Comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides. with me everywhere and he knows my every care i'm as happy as a bird and just as free for the spirit has control jesus satisfies my soul since the comforter abides with me he abides he abides Rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. There's no thirsting for the things of the world that taken wings. Long ago I gave them up and instantly all my night was turned to day, all my burdens rolled away. Now the Comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides. Hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way. For the Comforter abides with me. Page 30. It's good to have a brother up here on the mandolin tonight, ain't it? Some of these days I'm going home where no sorrows ever come. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Safe from heartache, pain, and care, we shall all that glory share. Sit down beside of my Jesus. Sit down. i 
I shall behold his blessed face I shall feel his matchless grace We'll soon be done with troubles and trials Oh, what peace and joy sublime In that home of love divine Sit out beside of my Jesus Sit out We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Yes, in that home on the other side. Shake glad hands with the elders. Tell my kindred good morning. Sit down beside of my Jesus. Sit down everyone out tonight their Wednesday night service good to see some of our sick people back to just <clears throat> y'all just traded places you for somebody else that's out sick <laughs> yeah. yeah May yeah. hey praise the Lord back good to have them all back well we gotta do something about this side over here yeah, <laughs> who has spoken prayer requests tonight Remember Bern. Jerry does. Yeah, do. Good. Good to have you back. Remember Adam? Remember him and salvation? Just a lot of we're second day in the second month. We ain't seen nobody saved yet. We're still praying, though. Yep. Still praying, brother. Anyone else at this time? Unspoken quest by you lifting up your hand as we gather around tonight, Father. <clears throat> but Jimmy started some prayer tonight.
I just want to say how thankful I am for answered prayer, for God's mercy, and for His grace and His love. He's been so good to me and my family, and I love Him so much. Just suppose God searched through heaven and couldn't find. that was needed to buy eternal life for you and me. Oh, had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary, and had it Oh, what a reason.
asked y'all to pray for me tonight. I ain't done this since I was like 10 years old. So I'm nervous. So I'm going to do it for the Lord. Now. There you go, brother. Oh, Lord, my God. When I'm in awesome wonder, consider all the work thy hands have done. I see the stars.
my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great. Come sing us a song. When I think of how he came so far from glory, came to dwell among holy, such as I. Suffer shame and sin. 
question, who am I? Appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, I know it come out on a cold, rainy night. And, uh, pray this will be a help to you. I, I'll try to stay here. If I move, I'll just grab one of these microphones, okay? Uh, I have no idea what to do with this tonight other than read it and, and drop the flag. I'm in Hosea chapter number 2. That's where we're going to take my text tonight. Hosea chapter number 2. I told Lisa, I wish she was here. I said, uh, I come to take you home. Sure would have fit this message tonight. But uh, she still, I think, tested positive yesterday. And so she's trying to get better. Brother Branch, Debbie, the Tackett family. I mean, Bonnie's better, I think, praise God. Sister May's back, Tammy's back. And this, this whole side, okay? We need to pray for this side. You hang in there, baby. You. 
Matthew, Tracy, doing good. Doing good. All three of you. Hosea, it's not that book everybody reads all the time. There's a beautiful story in this. There's a rough patch or two. So I'm like you, Randall. I'm going down the road saying, Lord, now this is my Wednesday night crowd. They come for pie. You know, if you come out on Wednesday night, you ought to get something sweet every now and then. But uh, this is where I'm at. Pray be a blessing to you. If we found Hosea 2, verse number 1, shout amen. Say ye unto your brethren, am I, to your sisters, Ruhamah, plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born, and make her as a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. And I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredoms. For their mother hath played the harlot. She, hath con- she that conceived them hath done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall. that She shall not find her pass. She shall follow after her lovers. But she shall not overtake them. She shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband. For then was it better with me than now. Father, I love you. I thank you for this night. For the chance to be here in your house tonight, Lord. For all the good singing we've heard, I'm praying you'd use me for just a little while. I pray you'd fill my mouth and guard my tongue and preach this. Lord, help me be accurate in the scripture. Bless it for your sake. I'm thankful tonight, God, for the blood covenant. I'm thankful for what you've shown me today. I pray this will be a help to you people. God, I can't do this without you. I need you, Lord. I pray you anoint me afresh and anew. I'll give you grace, praise, and glory for all that you do tonight. And I ask it in my Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. My thought two days ago, and I didn't know where I was going to find it. Sometimes you get the thought and then you find the scripture. Sometimes you get the scripture and you find the thought. And sometimes you're like Randall, and you read for three weeks and you don't find nothing, so you have to go back and get something you've done before because you just hadn't seen anything new. There's nothing new under the sun. And, 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 and so we know this book to be true, but we need fresh oil and fresh bread every day. Like the vitamin, I like that. You may not think it's doing anything for you, but just go ahead and read it. Because when you need it, it'll show up. The very time you need it, it's going to show up. It's going to strengthen you in something you didn't know you needed strength for. And just read the word. Now, let me give you a little rundown on Hosea. Hosea, Hosea is a contemporary with Isaiah. There's, there's, there's about four kings listed in chapter 1 that he's... That he's uh, associated with or he lives in that time frame but he's coming to 40 about 40 to 45 years from when he's given this prophecy they're going to see this thing come to pass they don't understand it right now because it's in the time of Jeroboam and it looks like everything's going very well and, and, and Jeroboam, not the one who caused Israel to sin, the son of Nebat, but Jeroboam the second, he brought the, 
ten tribes of Israel to its zenith. They'd never done as well. Once they broke from the two tribes of the south, Judah and Benjamin, the ten tribes had never done as well as they'd done under Jeroboam the second. And so he's prophesying here about something that they're not really getting. It's kind of like when you preach a message and folks, I've had people tell me, I didn't get that. I said, well, I'm sorry. I'm praying somebody did. Because that's just what I had to preach. I think that would have been the case with Jeroboam, I mean, or Hosea in the time of Jeroboam. But I want you to get a hold of this. He, he, God, God told him to break the law. Stay with me. God wrote the law, and God commands him to do something that wasn't lawful. Got your attention now. He told him to go marry him a whore. Well, the Bible, the law was very plain about that. If you find someone in that, you take them out and kill them. So they weren't, they didn't broadcast it very loudly. In other words, they kept it in the closet. There's things hidden. They didn't want them to know because it, the penalty for that, for adultery, was death. They would literally carry them out to a pile of stones, pick up a rock and bash them in the head, and throw rocks on them till it killed them. Pretty gruesome way to live. So, the Lord tells him, Go out and take you a wife of the whoredoms, and he goes out and he marries a woman named Gomer. Now, we're thinking, this can't be a good situation. I'm going to say something. I'm glad there's so many young people here tonight. And I know this is a little graphic for some of them, but it's not anything that's not in the Word of God. And here's the reality. Boys, if you want trouble, or if you, if you want to avoid trouble, stay away from Gomer. And girl, I'm just telling you, men, if you want trouble... Because here's what Gomer does. Gomer thinks more of herself than she does anybody else. It's all about me. It's what can you do for me. It's not what can I do for anyone else. It's about me, mine, and I. You find one of them, run away, boys. Young girls, if you find someone and that's all they chase is Gomer's, run away. I'm trying to help the young people tonight. Josh Baldwin uh, told my son one time, he called about a certain young lady, and Josh, in his best hillbilly lingo, said, run away. Good advice. So the, he, surely he's thinking, why am I doing this? Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. I don't know where, but I'm headed down the road. And here's what happens. God has her name or named the children, Lo am I and Lo Ruham, and that means not pitied and not my children. All of this is a picture of what's happening in the nation of Israel at this time. He has given them, He has given them an example through the life of His prophet Hosea. I'm sure Hosea's thinking they got to be a better way. But no, God's about to make a point. I'm a, it's going to help us right here in a minute. So what does he do? He does exactly what she says, or the Lord says. Hosea does exactly what the Lord says. They have three children. They have Je, uh, Jezreel, the first, Lurohama, that is the, is the daughter. And then they have lo am I the son, and, and, then, and then we come to chapter 2 and we find God's named them children, awful names, and then he says, just name her. Don't put the low in front of it, which meant not or no. So now, and now we find that, that Ruhama means pitied, and Ammai means my people. 
my child. So he's dropped that. But while he's dropped that, mama, mama's bumped her head and she's gone back to her old ways. Now, as we come reading down this, we see that, that he tells her to remove, uh, uh, to, that therefore put away her whoredoms and out of her sight and her adulteries, uh, uh, adulteries from between her breasts. We know the breast is the seat of affection. So she has lost, she has lost her affection for one that brought her out of a terrible situation she was in and her affection has been turned towards somebody else. That's a tragedy in American marriages today. Someone, husband, wife, whoever. I found this. There's a little fault on both sides of the ball there most every time. And I know who I'm preaching to tonight. If it wasn't for her stubbornness, she would have probably left me. Thank God for a stubborn woman. She's in a bad place. And her affection has left the one who helped her out of where she was. And the Lord says, I'm through. And she says, I'm going back to my first husband. Because it's, it was better then than now. I want us to think about now. It was better then why? She's thinking, now picture this. This is, this is exactly how the children of Israel has treated the Lord God Almighty who brought them out of their slavery, brought them out of their bondage, married them. They took them to wife, if you would. But no, they would rather play the harlot. Listen, listen, here's what it is. This is spiritual adultery is idolatry. So they chose the idols, and in the eyes of the Lord, they chose someone else over them. We're coming down the line. She begins to think. You know, it wasn't so bad with Hosea. Maybe, maybe she goes for some oil from somebody, and he says, too bad. You don't look as good as you once did. You're not rating any oil. Let me tell you, age will catch everybody in this room, and you're not going to be as pretty as you used to be. They better be something deeper than the skin, or you're going to be in trouble. Maybe she went for something besides the oil. She said, I'm going to go after my lovers that give me my bread, my water, my wool, my flax. In other words, my clothing. They've, that, here's what it is. It's my sugar daddy. Don't, 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 don't go sleep on me just yet. This will help you if you'll stay with me. She went, and they didn't give her what she needed. And she begins to think, it was better then. Than it is now. You know who this is a reference to? The children of God. The ten tribes. Now, I don't have time to preach all this tonight. It's the ten tribes. And you think, you think, well, preacher, that's all well and good. That's all well and good. Yep. Too bad for old Gomer. And I don't know why Hosea would take her back. And who is she to think she could go back? She's done left him that now when it gets so bad out there that it's not. Not near as good as it, it used to be. I'll just go back to what I had because what I had was really better than where I've been. Nevertheless, some of you that's been in Brother Wade's class will know where I'm at right here. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen 
and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of its place except thou repent. He'll take the church away. The light will disappear. Now, if you give me five minutes right here, I'll wrap every bit of this up. I'm saving this. I'm trying it out on you. And one of these days, I'm going to finish this and preach it in a revival. I may get kicked out. I think I'll save it for Friday night after the offering. Why would he take us back? Because there's nobody in this room that's done every single thing the Lord bid us do. There's not any one of us that could say there's not a wrinkle on me or a spot on me. I'm perfect before the Lord. There's not a soul in this building can say that. Anybody watching on the internet or anyone that will hear this over a CD one of these days. Not one. Why? None righteous A plus. But he gives opportunity. You know why he opened that window? Let's go back to Gomer. Let me go back to Gomer real quick. How dare her? How dare Israel say I'm going back because he is better to me? Who are they? To think they can go back to him. Because here's the reality in, 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 in modern society today. You do me wrong, you're done. You do me real wrong, you're real done. If you do me bad enough wrong, they'll kill you. That's why the prisons are full. You can't do me wrong. Ten tribes done the Lord wrong. The one who gave them their wool and their flax and their oil and their water and their daily bread. The one who brought them out of Egypt. The one who took care of them all the time. This is a very picture of that. Of the one who had done all these things for them. When the Lord said, when the Lord had commanded him to make a, give them the picture of it and said this. Said now call them low which means without, they're without pity. They're without, they're not my child. But then all of a sudden. Here comes the happy part. You go over, don't, don't turn, you don't have to turn there. But you, you, you get into chapter number three, and here's what you're going to find. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a half a homer of barley. For 15 pieces of silver, half the price of a slave. For a homer and a half of barley bread, the bread that the poor people eat or the oxen eat, the wealthy and the well-to-do didn't eat barley bread. That's for the poor people and fodder for the animals. Hey, that's what it is. But I bought her back and I, bless God, and I didn't give much for her to get her back, but I wanted her back. You know why he wanted her back? Watch this. Because he had made a covenant with Abraham. He had made a covenant with Abraham. And here's what he said. I want you to circumcise every male. You circumcise every male. Why would he ask him to do that? Of all the things God would ask. Why did he ask him to do? Why didn't he ask him to, to, to wear a certain hat? Or even... Even mark with a ring on their finger or something, an amulet around their neck. Why in the world, why would God say, I want you to circumcise every male and that's going to be a covenant to us? Here's why. Because there wasn't one child of Israel who was born. That the seed didn't pass through the covenant before the conception. You chew on that for just a minute. Not one child in the Hebrew 
that, that the seed didn't pass through the covenant before the conception. You know what he's saying? I'll buy her back. I've got the right to buy her back because of this. Because the covenant I made. And when God makes a covenant, he stands by his covenant. Everybody else may say, you can't come back. God not only said, you can come back, he said, I'll buy you back. He could have left them where they was, but he chose not to do it. He said, I'll spend for you. Hey, I'll spend money on you, and I'll give you what you need, and I'll bring you back to myself. Even though you don't deserve it, I made a covenant that said, I want you. What does that mean to us? The same thing. Because unless, you know what Jesus said? We just said it Sunday night. You know what he said? This is a covenant to you in my blood. You know what he's saying? There can't be a conception unless it passes through the covenant of the blood and once it's passed through the covenant of the blood you know what we can do Jimmy Pleasant every time we need to repent and turn around and come back he doesn't kick us to the curb no praise God he says come on home I paid for you I want you I want you to be mine and I made the covenant Anybody tell you you don't deserve to be in there, you'll say, you're exactly right. But he wants me anyway. In the Old Testament, in the time of Gomer, it was better then than it was now for her. But let me tell you, it's better now than it was then. It's better on this side. It's better under the blood covenant than over there. It's a whosoever will can come now. He's got his arms open. He's bidding you to come. He wants everybody that can hear my voice to come unto him whosoever. Listen, that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I'll give you some rest. You know who that's not true for? Unsaved people. Unsaved people. That's not true for them. What? That it was better then than now? Because it's not been good either place. But it can be better now than it's ever been if you want to receive the Lord. He's done everything he's going to do. But there can't be a conception, a new birth, unless it passes through the covenant. And the new one is blood. The old one was weak through the flesh. The new one is blood. The old one couldn't stand up. Hebrews says it's a better covenant. It's through the blood. You can do a lot of things with a lot of things, but you can't do nothing about the blood. You can't take it away. You can't hide it. You can't bury it. You can't make it run off. Bless God. There's no substitute. No substitute for the blood of Christ. And every time we need to repent and do our new works, you know why you'll say yes? Because of his covenant. If he bought Gomer back, let me tell you, he spent all he had on us. Jewel. All day reading for that, Randall. 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Now, there might be someone here tonight that's not entered into covenant with the Lord. It, it requires a birth. And it was shown in the first covenant with Abraham, pointing toward what is going to take for us now. There can't be a conception unless it passes through a covenant. Have you ever done that? Stand and bow your heads with me all over the sanctuary.
you know, in a crowd, as small a crowd as we have tonight. And it's greatly diminished what it normally is. There's a good chance there's someone in here tonight that's unsaved. Never trusted the Lord. Never been born again. There can't be a birth unless there's a conception. And there can't be a conception unless it comes through the covenant. Young, old, middle-aged, anywhere in between. Are you sure you're saved tonight? Have you got what you need to die with? The world's gone crazy. You don't know if you'll survive your next dollar store visit. You better know that you know the Lord Christ. We tarry just a few more moments. I want to thank you for your time and attention tonight, for coming and being in church with us. And I hope I, I've got something out of this service. I hope you did. If you come looking for something, it doesn't matter who's preaching or who's singing. If you come l really looking for something, God will give you something. He'll give you something. It may not be a plateful. It may be, it's be a, some nights it might just be a, a snack. It'll be something. And then other nights he may load your wagon. But it'll be something. Something you can take home with you and something you can think about. Search out. Hope that our sick people's well by this coming Sunday. And we have a house full of people. And uh, surely we've got herd immunity by now. And, and someone be saved. Help the preacher pray. Somebody be saved Sunday. It's the 2nd of February. And I prayed for 25 people. And we haven't seen anyone saved in the first month. And we need someone to be saved. And... Uh, I found out if I pray for other people's lost family, it's just like the Lord to save mine. That's how he works. So I, I, I can't think of an announcement to make. Uh, so uh, we'll just be dismissed, and we'll hope to, hope to see you Sunday morning. Brother Mark, would you dismiss us in prayer?